am being inundated with questions. So I'll ask one of myself. Or I'll ask one of Mr. McNeese. How's, how about that? Will that work, Kelly? Sure, sir. Okay. So when, so when the CG says transformation, what does that mean to you? You know, that's, that is a really good question uh, because uh, you know, transformation means so many things to different people. Uh, but it, the, So you have transition when you change from one, one station to another and you know where you're going. Uh, transformation is more like an open-ended journey. You, you know that you're going to cross the ocean, but you're not sure what you're going to get when you get there or how you're going to be able to adapt when you get there. Uh, so you got an idea of what you're trying to get to, but you're not sure what you're going to look like when you're there. But we'll, we'll all be there together. Yeah. So that's kind of then back to me. And so, um, so let, me, let me kind of, I'll tag along after, after that. Uh, so when you're, you know, I think one of, the, one of the interesting things about this job for me is, is describing uh, a future state. And, you know, it's always difficult for leaders, but I think, you know, especially if you're, if you're in an organization that provides a different set of services than what you're used to to being around. I mean, so I grew up in the civil affairs community. So I kind of knew how to describe a future, a future state for civil affairs. Uh, but a readiness division delivers a certain uh, set of services to our partners. And, and so it's a little bit diff difficult to describe it. Uh, but as I talked to, to uh, Colonel Lewis and Colonel Cheater this morning, uh, I'm get, starting to get my feet under me to describe what what the future looks like, and and how we can transform into delivering services either better or faster uh, or more comprehensively. And so I'll give you kind of one one example uh, of that. Uh, so you've got a facility out in the Denver area, uh, the Fitzsimmons facility, and it's been under, I've had units in that facility as long as I've been a general officer. Uh, and one reoccurring theme uh, that's, that's always brought to people's attention about that facility is the gate. Is, is everyone uh, identifies that the gate not working well or all the time as an issue uh, and that that one singular gate creates uh, physical security issues. So the, so the real response to that, uh, what's going on there, uh, really isn't just a, a, DPW, a DPW problem. Uh, there's also aspects of that that are G34 which which looks at the physical security of our facilities. Uh, some of it's even uh, the G4 uh, that uh, looks at how much stuff is stored in the facility. And so to actually improve uh, the facility for our partner or our partners that are there and actually improve their readiness, Re requires a little bit more of a comprehensive response. And so if you, you know, if you participate in the commander's update brief, uh, the one that we had in, uh, in May, uh, the last one we had was in May, and we ended up having a discussion about, well, how does a, def a physical security deficiency get uh, in the facility itself, how does that how does that get brought to the attention of DPW? And, and I think we identified kind of a gap that is pretty easily fixed uh, right now. It's just you just have to walk over and make, make sure that DPW knows that, hey, the CSS ticket that's going to come in uh, related to the Fitzsimmons facility uh, is, is actually one that's a priority 
because it was identified as a physical security uh, deficiency. And the other thing that then flows out of that is, is the things that cannot be addressed are, are then able to be articulated better as, as things that the commander may need to get involved in. And, and so, you know, to me, transformation uh, sometimes isn't uh, about a new thing or even a new, uh, even necessarily a new process. It's about ways for us to communicate better about an issue and how do we respond to it? Do we respond to it comprehensively or do we just respond to it as one individual section at a time uh, responding to it? And I think a critical piece of that is always letting our customer know uh, that there is uh, that there's indeed a, a, an issue. And I'm going to check here real quick. There may be a question in chat. Okay, so uh, this one is from uh, uh, Robert Thomas. Sir, we are eager uh, to see who will be where so we can make plans. I suspect that quite a few green suitors that have been working out of Fort McCoy will be working at Fort Schnelling at some point soon. It also makes sense that we, that we keep some people at Fort McCoy to work side by side with their civilian counterparts. It would be helpful to know when that decision will be made. Do you have any estimate as to when you will make uh, that, that decision? Well, sort of as I laid out, I really have made the decision that we're going to be split stationed. And I think what we're waiting for right now is feedback from the staff on some of the eaches that you described. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm certainly not looking, uh, you know, I'm not looking to uh, uh, make a decision that somebody comes back around, you know, a year from now or two years from now and second guesses. Uh, what I'm interested in is making decisions that make sense for the command. Now, some of that is 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 found in the uh, in the Manning document for the command. You know, there's a there's a stationing action that was approved um, and went into I guess the TDA went into effect back in October. That sort of says where people are supposed to be. There have been some of those positions that had been moved over to McCoy. Uh, we, we frankly, we can't, we can't piece an AGR, for example, we can't PCS them a second time uh, just from McCoy back over to Schnelling. So some of the changes uh, that fall into that category will occur, you know, when someone's backfill comes in. Probably the best example of that that I know of right off the top of my head uh, is is the SGS position. So so the position actually on the TDA is supposed to be at uh, Fort Schnelling, uh, but it was moved uh, over to Fort McCoy because that's where the previous commander thought that that position could best be utilized. And in and in my case and in my case, I I kind of my going in assumption is is that people belong where the Army uh, thinks, they, thinks they should be, which is identified in TDA documents. And certainly in my case, I really do think that the SGS needs to be nearest the commander uh, to help organize uh, the correspondence coming in and out with the commander. It would certainly help me to be able to talk uh, you know, to talk to the SGS without having to pick up the phone and, and wonder if Colonel Venable is rolling his eyes at anything I might be saying. Uh, I know he wouldn't do that, but he could be uh, when you can't actually see somebody. Uh, so we're going to work through it in a logical fashion, and we will. If I, I mean, I would, I would say the, the specifics on that, I'm kind of looking at Kelly next 30 sure. days. Easily within the next 30 days. Okay, easily within the next 30 days. Uh, okay, uh, do I have another another question from anyone? 
Let's see. Maybe I have a follow-up. Nope. Oh, I have a hand raised. So, uh, let's see. Uh, long name, and I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> hey, Dominic. Sorry, I got my glasses on now so I can, I can see you. So, go ahead. Yeah, so so here I'll just give you. I mean, I'll give you some. I'll give you some thoughts, and some of this will no doubt be. Um, um, some of this will be kind of big hand wave stuff. I realize. Uh, I, I think one of the things we kind of we kind of suffer from with a lot of our programs in the Army Reserve, is we've been doing we've been doing them a certain way, for a long time. And in some cases, we have to do them that way because that's what maybe even the statute says or certainly the regulation says. Uh, I, I, I think one of the advantages of this kind of innovation process that, I, that I'm trying to introduce the command to is this idea of, of try something small, something that's minimally viable, uh, and then get some feedback from those that it's supposed to impact. And so I think from the family, you know, from the family readiness uh, standpoint, uh, or from the soldier family readiness standpoint, is, you know, you got a couple of constituencies that you're, you're trying to impact, soldiers and their, and their families, and in some cases extended families. Uh, so in my mind, those are, so there are customers or our partners uh, in this process. And therefore, there might be things that we need to know from them and then try, you know, try out, try out for them. You know, I think one of the things we've learned in the Army Reserve is, uh, you know, we, the Double Eagle app. I'll refer to it as the long-suffering double eagle app. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think if it, I think if it had, uh, you know, kind of one overarching failing, it was that it was rolled out and and you weren't able to provide some of that kind of user feedback on what would make it, uh, what would make it more functional. And so when I kind of think about you know, when I think about soldier and family readiness, uh, you know, part of it is is we went from a we went from a uh, an environment where we were deploying a lot as an Army Reserve, uh, you know, six years ago. Uh, now uh, the environment's changed quite a bit, and so now we we're deploying much much less. Uh, for for nine month deployments, and we're doing, you know, exercise support that may last thirty days. Uh, we 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 have we've had COVID, which initially presented some challenges to families that we hadn't we hadn't faced before, uh, and you, you know so I I think it's this idea of how do we look. For ways to meet the needs of of those we serve, you know it's and it is geographic, and so you there's I mean I think there's always been this issue of of unit cohesion. Uh, unit cohesion's always meant a lot to the army, but you're really having to kind of aggregate that cohesion at a much higher level, and I think that impacts how people want to be involved. So I've I've 
responded long-windedly with no real answers other than I think what I would say kind of to you and your team is look for those ways to really get some customer customer feedback from people uh, that might tell us something uh, that's a little bit different. And so I'll give you a couple of examples. We've already had some customer feedback on some things that I've said in the chat box. Uh, so one is uh, after my response about Fort Snelling. Uh, receiving logistical support while working at Fort Snelling has, has us at a disadvantage. Can we have the UICs from Fort Schnelling updated so that the DODACs point to Fort Schnelling? Uh, I'm looking at uh, Mr. Zerp, who's in the room here with us, and he's shaking his head because that's been a frustrating point to him uh, as well. And so that's, a, that's something that, you know, that we can work through because now we understand. Now we're committing to a direction, and it's something we know we need to work through. Uh, a different comment. Double Eagle app is not user friendly or millennial user friendly. Uh, that is the majority of the military age group. And I think that's, you know, hey, that comment's right, right on the mark. And it gets into this idea of really, you got to get feedback from people before you commit, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to something. I think. It, it's this idea of trying, trying small things, getting some feedback, and if and if it's, you know, if it's what people are wanting, uh, then moving uh, to something that's a little bit, give them another feature or another couple of features, and keep getting their feedback. Uh, I I mentor startups. Uh, in, uh, at Texas Tech University and that's the process a startup goes goes with. It has an idea, uh, it tries to get some feedback initially when it's just an idea. Uh, would this help you? You know, let me know how, how you feel about it. Uh, those, those kind of customer interviews really have to occur in person. Uh, you know, you can't uh, Survey Monkey is is good for for certain things, but it's things like this where you have ideas. You have to find a way to talk uh, to those that would actually be the customers of it. I realize that's not easy when it comes to in the family world to find people that'll actually talk to you, and and in reality find people that'll talk to you that haven't been talking to you. I think that's always important. Uh, so do we have another, I got more double down on the double eagle app is not user friendly for the civilian workforce. I would, I would agree with that, agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, 